I lamp the tea so that uh, uh, so that uh, you know you can fly through this chapter very quickly. Basically, you know, uh, we didn't introduce a lot about two way model. Two way model just include uh, some additional term, right? Some year dummy, so that so th so that. What our focus is uh, chapter two, chapter four, five, seven, eight. Let's summarize this way. First of all, chapter two and chapter four, we learn that's the foundation of uh, panel data. Chapter two, we learned fixed effect, random effect. Chapter four, we learned Hausmann test, right? So actually, that's the foundation of panel data because to most people, their knowledge is simply fixed effect, random effect, and Hausmann test. Right. Try to try to compare the two by using Hausmann test. And so that let's see, shall we use a fixed effect or shall we use a random effect? Right. So, so again, once you, once you finish a fixed effect, random effect, Hausmann test, you are already better than I would say 90% of those, uh, of their people's knowledge of panel data. Uh, to us, let's summarize this way. Uh, for the, let, let me open chapter two. For this panel data model, for this panel data model, so depends on mu i is nice or not nice. And so what kind of estimators can we, can we think of? We have, we've already learned many, many different estimators, right? So for example, uh, for example, if we treat mu i to be not nice, Suppose mu i is a troublemaker, which really correlated with xi, right? So that we have to cancel it out, right? So far, at least we have two different transformations. We have a fixed effect. We have first difference, right? Fixed effect, of course, also called within transformation. So that at least you have two options, fixed effect and the first difference, right? Either one is fine. And no matter which one, hence we canceled mu i out. By the way, you know, by the way, you, you need to be able to derive those equations by yourself. In other words, from the, from the basic e equation, from this equation, you need to be able to derive, for example, what's my between equation and then their difference so that you, you be able to derive what's my within equation, right? That should be very, very straightforward so that you should be able to derive your within equation or similarly, derive the first different equation by yourself, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> very simple. So, so far we have fixed effect estimator, first difference estimator. They too do not require the additional assumption, mu i assumption, right? Hence, the, the opposite, if we assume mu i is nice, then we have the random effect estimator, right? But besides random effect estimator, if mu i is really nice, Besides random effect estimator, actually, you can also try all or less, right? Even, even all or less is still correct. If, if mu i, if mu i has nothing to do with x, even all or less is correct, right? As random effect, all or less, what else? Actually, between estimator will be also correct in that case, right? So again, so let's summarize this way. If mu i is not nice, our option is, uh, I'll write it down for you. For example, say, um, fixed effect estimator, uh, of first difference estimator, right? They too, they too are always correct. They too are robust to the mu i assumption, right? And, uh, if you assume mu i is nice, then our options are you can use, uh, you can use a random effect estimator, right? But besides random effect, even the original all or less is also correct, right? And in that case, actually, if you want, you can also use a between estimator, right? Still remember between the y, y bar over x bar, right? It's kind of stupid, but, uh, uh, it's, we call it stupid because we are losing number of observations, right? We have much, much less number of observations, but, uh, you know, we didn't cancel out mu i. But anyway, if mu i is nice, the between estimator is also correct, right? So that's why we treat the two or two categories of estimator as either fixed effect or fi first difference or random effect, all or less and, uh, between, right? But of course we, we say, 
random effect dominates the, the, the other two. Random effect dominates all or less and between because random effect in the second case will be more efficient than the other two, right? So that's basically the discussion. So that's why most of the time, most of the time, in case a random effect, you know, case, if you assume mu i is nice, nobody use uh, all or less or between because all a uh, random effect will be more efficient than the other two, right? That's basically the discussion. So that's the estimators we have in hand. Uh, besides the two, uh, by the way, by the way, you can compare the two by using a Hausman test. Talking about Hausman test, H now is always uh, the nice, easy case, which is uh, mu i is nice, right? Strictly speaking, the mathematically speaking, in assumption four, notation is an expectation of mu i condition on x i t, conditional expectation is a zero, right? So opposite H1 is a conditional expectation is not zero, right? So for us, you can understand something like uh, H null will be the nice case that uh, say fixed effect equals to random effect. H1 opposite, the two are different, right? So on so forth. So that you should be based on, depends on different situation. You should be able to tell, you know, do, do we reject now or fail to reject now? Do we prefer fixed effect or do we prefer random effect? We prefer fixed effect because of what? Because it's a consistency or do we prefer for its uh, efficiency, right? So, so all of the discussion, we already did that exercise again and again. So you, you should be able to, you know, do this by yourself. By the way, we didn't uh, show you the result, but uh, directly speaking, if you want, you, you should be able to compare first difference with this random effect as well. Uh, before words, we only show the result compare fixed effect with this random effect, right? Since first difference is so similar to fixed effect, strictly speaking, you can also use a Hausman test to compare first difference with this random effect, right? But uh, uh, that's theory. But in reality, uh, Stata is not that friendly to first difference, right? Stata didn't program this for us, right? That's why, uh, strictly speaking, it's feasible, but uh, Stata didn't make it uh, make it available for us, right? <laughs> if I were Stata programmers, I'm going to include fix first difference as should be an option, such as XT rec, comma, say FD is supposed to give me first different estimator so that I can use Hausman test to compare my FD versus RE, right? But obviously, Stata guys didn't make this available to us, right? Theoretically speaking, should be, should be feasible, but the data guys, they didn't program this for us, right? So, so that uh, this beyond our level, so. I won't test you on this, but, uh, you know, the theory says it should be very similar. Uh, that's the contents of chapter two, chapter four. Uh, if I were Betty, if I were the author of, uh, you know, a textbook, Beta Bataji, once we learn fixed effect, random effect, I'm going to directly show you what's our Hausman taylor estimator. Still remember what's Hausman taylor estimator? It's, uh, it's used in the case when we, for example, when, when we have the zi term, for example, uh, say, when we study the regression, say, left-hand side is wage, right-hand side besides your, besides your, uh, working experience, besides your education, so that we have a zi so, such as your gender, your race, and also your education, right? So, so the, the, the dilemma is random effect give us everything, all those coefficients, right? But, it requires additional assumption. You have to make sure random effect pass a Hausman test, right? Fixed effect is always correct, but unfortunately, fixed effect doesn't give us the, the coefficient of zi, right? Doesn't give an answer. One of them doesn't give an answer. The other one give an answer, but um, you know, very, very like you know, often it's a wrong answer, right? <laughs> so that. You know, uh, for you, for applied users, in that case, you, if you really want to get a coefficient for, say, education, coefficient for gender, coefficient for race, then, you know, probably you should pray, please, please let me pass Hausman test, right? <laughs> if you're lucky, if you pass Hausman test, then, you know, congratulations, you're done, right? But 
if unluckily, if you fail to pass Hausman test, then we need to resort to Hausman Taylor estimator, right? What's Hausman Taylor estimator? It is uh, in chapter chapter seven, should it be? Uh, right here. Second half of uh, chapter seven is uh, Hausman Taylor. So, so the idea is uh, if you define something called a D, D is based on the difference between y bar minus beta xi bar, right? If you call the D, if you run a two stage least square D over Z by using instruments, right? That simply is a Hausman Taylor estimator. What's the instruments? Very simple. And so I don't want you guys memorize a conclusion by using brutal force. Right here is that we can always divide the Z into two groups, Z1 group and the Z2 group. The Z1 is always a nice exogenous group which doesn't require instruments, right? Z2 is a troublemaker. They correlate it with a mu I, right? So that we need to look for instruments for Z2. So the, the issue is that for Z2, actually, you know, we can find instrument within the system, which is a, we can use X1, we can use X1 to be instruments for Z2, right? So overall, Hausman Taylor estimator is a two stately square regression D over Z. Again, Z contains a Z1, Z2, right? So Z1, you don't need instrument for them. So Z1 instrument for themselves. But Z2, we need to find instruments. They are X1 variables. X1, just like Z1, they are exogenous variables, right? So in the application we learned in class, they are uh, uh, gender and race, right? And so Z2, they are, you know, education, so on and so forth. Usually, you know, for us, we are not trying to say which one is uh, what. So, but given whatever those are X1, X2, Z1, Z2, how to, how to, how to do, how to get our Hausman Taylor estimator. That's, that's what we require. So for Hausman Taylor estimator, first of all, you know, uh, you'd need to know, oh, when do we need <laughs> this estimator, right? What's the, what kind of situation? When we, when we fail to pass a Hausman test, right? But we really want to know the coefficient of Z. So we do Hausman Taylor estimator. How to do Hausman Taylor? Right here. And so we run such a two steady square, right? And so by using this kind of instrument, of course, you need to know what's X1, X2, Z1, Z2. And so X1, Z1, they are always nice exogenous variables. Uh, X2, Z2, they are bad endogenous variables, right? So that's the Hausman Taylor estimator. Again, if I were baddie, I would directly introduce Hausman Taylor right after fixed effect alignment. It's a natural extension, right? Um, so that's the Hausman Taylor, right? Let me write down right here so that this is a Hausman Taylor estimator, right? Estimator. So after this one, what do we learn? We learned, uh, uh, let's finish chapter seven. We learned uh, two stage least square, fixed effect version, random effect version. The fixed effect version is very simple. Y tilde over X tilde by using instruments Z tilde, right? Very simple. Random effect version, we have two options, right? Random effect version, we have two options. The default version, default version, G to stately square, you know, it's, it's, uh, two stately square, Y star or X star by using instrument Z star, right? That's G to stately square. This, the second version is instruments. We, we simply provide both of them to computer Z tilde and the Z bar, right? And so uh, within the Z and uh, between the Z. And so you can prove Z star is a linear combination of the two. So that that is estimator. That is a EC to slay square. Basically provide both of them to computer. Let computer to determine, you know, what shall we do to, to the two, right? So the first one, 
both of them, they are random effect version, re to slate square. State default is a first one, g to slate square. But a baddest version is always better, right? So, you know, to, to they to this kind of stuff, um, simple, just uh, as long as you know what they are, what kind of estimator, you know, what's, what they are should be good enough. <laughs> Not a lot to, to, to discuss, right? So as long as you know what they are, and that should be should be good. Now chapter uh what left? Chapter we've already mentioned chapter two, chapter four, chapter seven. Now chapter five and chapter eight. They two are kind of similar in the sense chapter five and chapter eight, both of them try to discuss autocorrelation over time. But in chapter five, we talk about autocorrelation in our error term V, right? Chapter eight, we just introduced today, is autocorrelation in our Y, right? So they are totally different in the sense, in chapter five, when our autocorrelation is in V, it only causes a second moment problem. See, in chapter five, let's see. We learned... Uh, if we have autocorrelation in V, we follow, we call the AR1 process, right? So we introduced uh, FEAR, REAR, what they are? They are basically, they are very similar to our original fixed effect estimator, random effect estimator, right? But based on original estimator, we, we simply take care of the autocorrelation in V, try to make it more efficient. In other words, if you talk about if you compare FEAR versus the original FE, FEAR is supposed to be more efficient because we, we take care of the autocorrelation V, right? REAR similarly will be also similar, more efficient than the original RE because again, REAR takes care, takes care of the autocorrelation V, right? So that's the comparison, you know, FEAR, REAR compared to original FE and RE, right? And similarly, if you compare between this way, FEAR versus REAR, they two, if you want to compare they two, again, by using a Hausman test, right? It will be very, very similar to the Hausman test when we compare original FE versus original RE, right? The difference between fixed effect and random effect, the Hausman try to compare, try to see if mu i is correlated with X or not, right? As the, the Hausman test to compare the two FEAR, REAR, REAR will be exactly the same as the Hausman test for the original fixed effect random effect, right? Very, very similar. Actually, even exactly the same, right? And so, so, so autocorrelation in V only cause a second moment problem. In other words, if you ignore autocorrelation V, you're still correct. For example, if you use a fixed effect, you're still correct, but it may not be efficient. Your stand error might be too large, right? That's the, by the way, there's a technical detail about FEAR, which is a uh, FEAR to me, I like to view FEAR to be a general estimator, which includes F first difference and a fixed effect as special cases. In other words, if the true value of rho is a zero, then FEAR simply reduces to the FE, right? If the rho is one, then FEAR simply reduces to FD, right? So, you know, which one is better? In general, actually, FEAR will be, from theory, FEAR will be always better than the other two, right? Because FEAR always uses the best value of rho. We let computer to calculate the rho hat so that we use the best value of a rho, right? If you always use a rho to be zero, or if you always use a rho to be one, it may not be the best solution, right? Although you're correct in terms of beta hat, but it may not be efficient, right? So the best solution should be FEAR supposed to be more efficient, always more efficient than the other two options. That's why I told you guys before when people ask me, uh, how do we compare FD versus FE, right? And so my answer is, uh, you know, I, I don't suggest you to compare the two because uh, to me, there is a better, uh, even better option out there, which is FEAR, right? Only if uh, rho is exactly zero or exactly one so that 
we should exactly go to either FE or FD, right? But in general, FE AR will be always better out there, right? So that's the that's the discussion for this chapter, chapter uh, chapter five. Finally, uh, finally, uh, we have uh, uh, chapter eight. What we learned t today. What we learned today is that uh, dynamic panel data. By the way, uh, for chapter seven, we learned uh, uh, F E A R and also uh, R E A R. Right, those those estimators. So they're they're trying to take care of the autocorrelation. They are they two are really really similar to the original F E and R E. They just are trying to even gain efficiency. Right now, finally, in in chapter of um, dynamic panel data, in dynamic panel data, if we have a lag of Y, again, this is autocorrelation, but if uh, autocorrelation Y, then it's totally different. It's gonna cause the first moment problem in the sense your coefficients will be wrong, right? Beforewards, FEAR, REAR, you try, just try to correct the stand error. But right here, your beta, your coefficient will be wrong so that you need to correct the coefficient, right? You cannot directly, after first difference or after fixed effect the transformation, you cannot run all or less anymore. You have to do two stage least square, right? By using instruments, right? So, the, you know, in order to get a correct, correct beta head. So how can we use, uh, you know, those uh, instruments? We just mentioned just now. Y T minus two, right? The understand the shell they proposed. So right here, you should be able to tell why they suffers from the endogenous problem after first difference, right? Yeah. And why the Y T minus two could be used an instrument which satisfies the two conditions, right? And also why when delta is close to one, then this instrument it suffers from weak instrument problem, <laughs> you know, so those kind of discussion, right? So on and so forth. So that uh, basically that's the issue from this uh, chapter eight. So that's a summary of uh, what we learned so far. Uh, so chapter, uh, in short, you can ignore chapter three, focus on chapter two, four, five, seven, eight. Uh, in terms of exam, the midterm exam, you're going to see uh, probably four short answer questions. And so I'm going to give you some uh, computer outputs and based on computer outputs, ask you a bunch of questions. Or I can directly ask you the, the question in theory, for example, something like, uh, what's the procedure, say, FEAR? What's the procedure for, say, uh, understand shell estimator, so on and so forth, right? Or I can give you some computer outputs based on, say, uh, based on say FEAR, you know, so ask you how large is rho so that uh, shall we use a FD, FE, or FEAR, so on so forth, right? So the four questions, so they're going to correspond into this. The first question, the basic stuff, fix effect, random effect, Hausman test, and uh, I'll, I'll put Hausman Taylor estimator into question number one because to me that's a natural extension right <laughs> it's a fixed effect random effect Hausman Taylor and the Hausman Taylor so that uh, uh, the first question I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you about about uh, these kind of uh, estimators try to see you know shall we use this one shall we use that one what's the h now h1 for the Hausman test well, based on the conclusion what's your uh, uh, output what's your conclusion Hausman test right shall we use a fixed effect or shall we use a Hausman uh, random effect and uh, uh, I, I maybe I give you the Hausman Taylor estimator result and ask you say uh, what's the procedure for this uh, Hausman Taylor, right? And uh, Taylor estimator, right? Uh, basically, briefly, right? Uh, explain what's the Hausman Taylor estimator, and uh, so that uh, uh, basically that's that's a question number one the, about the foundation chapter uh, chapter two, chapter four, and Hausman Taylor. And the second question will be our endogenous issue. Basically, fixed effect to slate square, random effect to slate square. And so, uh, and so uh, uh, basically, you need to know what they are. What's, what's FE to slate square? What's, 
what's RE to the square, right? Especially, especially, especially the random effect version, we have two versions, right? G, the default, state default G to the square, and also Betty's uh, version, EC to the square, what they are, right? You need to know what they are, for example, the in, in terms of instruments, what they, the, what's their instruments, right? And so, and so, uh, and so, uh, which one is better? So on and so forth. So the theory, of course, in short, bad is estimator is better, right? So that how to compare them. Uh, that's, uh, that's the second question. The, the third question will be on chapter five, autocorrelation. There'll be the FEAR, uh, REAR, those estimators, for example, say, I, I can give you some computer outputs. Uh, you know, give you FEAR, REAR, Hausman test, so on and so forth, right? And just like our homework, based on RE, uh, based on FEAR results, but you, you know, I can ask you how large the row head computer tells you, right? And based on row head, shall we use a fixed effect or shall we use a, a first difference or shall we use a FEAR, so on and so forth, right? And so, and the third question will be based on FEAR, REAR, that question, that chapter. So basically, you need to know, uh, in this case, uh, uh, basically what we just mentioned just now. If you ignore autocorrelation in error terms, then what happens, right? Short answer is that not efficient anymore, right? But the beta is still correct. So that uh, based on computer outputs, I can ask you some questions or so on and so forth. Should be very similar to, to those questions in the homework. And finally, question number four will be on dynamic panel data. And so just uh, those things I mentioned today, such as I uh, say, uh, uh, I'm going to ask you maybe say derive the first difference equation, right? Given dynamic model, derive the delta equation. Basically, just what do everything I showed you in class. Those uh, left hand side change in yt, right hand side change in yt minus one, right? And I, I, I'm asking you say, uh, say why we have endogenous problem after first difference, right? And so I explain why they two are correlated. You 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 need to explain, for example, uh, my error term and uh, regressor, both of them contain, so for, for example, one of them, y t minus one, the other one, v t minus one, so on and so forth, right? I explain why they're in, endogenous. Second of all, uh, explain why the instrument, why they work. Understand the shell estimator, their instrument, why they work, right? So on and so forth. And third of all, the, the weak instrument problem we mentioned just now, why when delta is close to one, we have a weak instrument problem, right? So on and so forth. And I might give you computer outputs and ask you, say, I might give you the computer outputs, I'll say, error length of bound estimator. Based on the estimator, shall we use a error length of bound estimator or shall we use a fixed effect estimator? Right? For example, something like this. And talk about a if I give you a Rolano bound estimator result like this, right? Then shall we use uh, this one or shall we use a fixed effect? I, I, I don't even have to give you fixed effect estimator, right? Because fixed effect estimator based on delta is a zero. Basically, you need to check out delta is that really zero or non zero. So that shall we use this or shall we use a fixed effect, right? So in this case, the delta, of course, 0.7, non-zero, very significant, different from zero, right? So based on the result right here, so that we should use this guy, right? <laughs> if you use a fixed effect, then you're wrong, right? So that's that's the fourth question. So our midterm exam going to cover these four issues, one, two, three, four, exactly corresponding to this order. And uh, I might give you a question number five, bonus question, uh, just in case you get bored. <laughs> the bonus question uh, will be only one point. Only one point. <laughs> just, just, you know, only if you finish everything. Only if, I, you know, once you finish everything, you feel like... Uh, uh, I can already get 100 points. I'm really bored so that you can try the bonus question. You know, uh, if you if you do the bonus question correctly, you, you only get one point. <laughs> right? So so my suggestion is uh, make sure you, you know, the four question number, number one, two, three, four correctly. Then if you still have uh, some leisure time, if you 
if, if you, you know <laughs> if you want to kill time, if you feel that too easy, then work on the bonus, right? Just uh, just in case you get bored, <laughs> but. Uh, uh, but uh, make sure you do those four questions are correct before you try bonus. And uh, the question, the, the the exam will be, uh, will be posted on Canvas and uh, erase. Um, and uh, I'm gonna post on. I'm gonna post on link right here exam. Uh, actually, I've already made the day time available time a little bit earlier. So, for example, so today is 14th. Or originally, you know, supposed to starting from uh, Wednesday to Wednesday, but I'll make it available starting from the weekend, just in case you want to do it. You know, starting from the weekend, uh, 17th, right? So you can you can starting from 17th and. Uh, it will do 27, 17 to 27, so that you have uh, more than a week, including two weekends, right, to, to do it. So uh, I uh, I create another additional link so that once you finish everything, upload to, to the link. And uh, the requirement of this exam is, uh, I forgot I put the requirement or not, but anyway. Uh, to do the exam, you, you're going to need uh, a computer camera so that uh, turn on the camera, the computer going to check your ID ch to make sure it, it is you who is doing the exam, right? So the, the money in the computer camera going to show your face as on the first, make sure you're you're doing all, you know, the exam all the time. And uh, once you start the exam, you have to finish within three hours. Uh, to me, you know, most people, you, you don't need three hours to, to, to do the exam. Most people uh, probably can finish within an hour, you know, maybe an hour and a half as on the first. But anyway, once you start, you have to finish within three hours. Uh, once you finish uh, everything, so click down and, uh, you know, uh, you can take a picture of your, uh, because uh, I assume you, you're writing your exam on a piece of paper, uh, handwrite your answers, and then take a picture or s uh, use a scanner, uh, scan your exam. Uh, if you take a picture, make, make sure it's, everything is clear, right? So that upload your photo or scan the paper to Canvas. I, again, I'm going to create an additional link, let you upload to the link over there. And... Uh, Make sure once you finish your exam, make sure you you upload your uh, your picture uh, within ten minutes. Uh, I don't want to you know finish an exam maybe one day two days later you know <laughs> maybe you change everything again and upload right. Try you know maybe you can use five minutes ten minutes but <laughs> no longer. So basically. Basically, finish everything quickly. Once you you might it might cost you five minutes, ten minutes to 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 scan everything, but uh, no more than that. So that's basically the schedule. So uh, so the the question exam again starting from seventeenth and to do on twenty seven during this time, any time during the during the exam uh, during the time hence I find the time that. Uh, uh, twenty seven, maybe, maybe I can uh, do. You guys feel the time period is that okay or seventeen to twenty twenty seven? Is that time period that good? In, that good to you guys? Okay, <laughs> all right then. Uh. Anytime during that time period, do it and submit online. So next week, let me go back to the syllabus. Uh, next week, uh, actually next two weeks, 21st and 28th, we're going to have uh, Robin Sikos uh, come here, give us a guest lecture. Actually, uh, Actually, next Friday he'll also give a seminar for the for the department on Friday. So that just in, I, I I post the details later on on Canvas in case if you want to go to his uh, seminar. So basically, 
I would encourage you guys try to make you know as long as uh, feasible, make sure you come to here to to talk to him, take his lecture. He's gonna probably he's gonna cover all different type of topics, and so uh, he he's a. Uh, the very beginning, he does those uh, firm efficiency, basically. And then uh, this is very important for those, especially in management, for example, or accounting. For example, if you have, uh, say, many, many firms, he wants to study which firm is more efficient, which were not efficient. He wants to calculate the efficiency level. For example, this firm, let's say the best firm, if you call it 100% efficient, there may be the other firms, they are, you are 80% efficient. You are, say, 50% efficient, so on and so forth, right? To rank the efficiency of those firms. And the later on, he basically extends this idea, you know, later on to many, many different uh, topics so that uh, uh, he is uh, very famous in the field. Uh, he in charge of um, a bunch of different uh, journal articles. He was in Rice University so that uh, the reason why I encourage you guys to talk to him in class, after class is, uh, you know, if you, for example, if you do some project, maybe very likely so submit your paper to his journals, right? Or maybe later on uh, for master's degree, if you want to apply for a program, say, you know, maybe in Rice or even his uh, his friends or teachers and program very, very often, you know, he has uh, friends in those programs. And so, you know, <laughs> and so if you could get his help, it's very big bonus very big plus right so that's why you know uh uh try your best to to, to come to his uh, guest lecture and uh uh just sit and listen later on later on uh after spring break i'll uh i'll try to summarize i'll review uh session i'll let you know what is required what is uh, not so so that eventually I'll, I'll select part of his uh, guest lecture to put into our final exam. But uh, again, I, I'll review and I'll let you know what is required, what is not. He's going to cover a lot of uh, different things, but we will select a little bit into the final exam. Question? Uh, uh, not this Friday. Next Friday, he's going to do a... Uh, his, uh, his topic, his seminar will be on spatial issue, spatial uh, those efficiency, uh, spatial spillover, su such as uh, you know over space. Talk about those firms. If you are good, and maybe maybe you know uh, people, other firms they're gonna learn from you. So that we call spatial spillover. Uh, so the other similar firms in the industry they're gonna they're gonna learn from you. If you're bad. Uh, similarly, people also learn from you, right? Learn lessons so that uh, don't do don't do what he does, right? So that that we call the spatial spillover. So he basically that's the extension of those efficiency stuff, and that we talk about the over space. How do we capture the information? The spatial spillover. The firms they learn from each other, and so. Uh, 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 I haven't got his paper yet, but uh, once we got his paper, I, I post the detailed information on Canvas so that if you interested in spatial issue, so that uh, you can go to his uh, seminar. It will, it should be next week, next Friday, two o'clock. And uh, again, I post the details on on Canvas. Uh, any any other questions about anything? Question. Yeah. So, just review. So, the final exam. We'll basically be on a screen, but we're going to answer the final exam questions on a physical piece of paper with a pen or a pencil, and then we'll scan it into like a PDF. Yeah, it, yes. And so uh, uh, either PDF or, uh, you know, uh, other format of a photo, as long as, you know, it could be opened on Canvas, should it be fine, such as uh, maybe JPG or, uh, you know, there could be other format. It doesn't have to be exactly PDF. But anyway, the point is, as long as we, you know, it could be open on, on Canvas, should be fine. Should be fine. Uh, any other questions? Uh, sir. And go ahead. Just a, a dumb question, I apologize. Is um, our notes, uh, like our written notes allowed for the exam? Uh, no, it's a closed book exam. So that uh, for some... Uh, some formula, some details you need to remember. For example, say 
Uh, I mentioned some of them just now. For example, say, given a panel data model, you need to be able to, say, derive within equation, between equation by yourself, right? <laughs> some details such as, say, what's the houseman taylor estimator? You need to remember by yourself. So most, uh, uh, most often, we only require the, the, the stuff we mentioned in class, the most important part. So uh, usually, we do not require too many proofs. So only, you know, require, for example, what is, say, what is EC to three squares so on the words, right? So, so, but anyway, it's a closed book exam, closed book exam. Any other questions? Uh, then prepare for the exam if you have any questions. So feel free to contact me. I'll be around. Uh, otherwise, uh, then, uh, then see you guys uh, later on. So uh, guest lecture will be goes to Robin. And uh, after spring break, Robin's guest lecture afterwards will be spring break, right? So after spring break, it will be, we're, we're going to continue to learn to learn more about the baddies that text with those penalty issues. All right. That's all for today. And uh, good luck to your exams. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Good night, folks. Good night.